For those of you that don't know, I'm Maggie, and today we're talking all about my favorites for the month of April. Now this is a weird hodgepodge collection of products and these have to do with, I don't know, everything from cleaning my retainer to cleaning my face to reading. So let's just hop right in and let's start with the weirdest one. And this, So the first thing I want to talk about is the weirdest thing and I'm holding a denture bath. Something I never thought I'd say and no, I don't have dentures. This is a little trick that I learned from Jessica Braun here on YouTube. Now I don't have Invisalign, but I do watch every video that she uploads. So I'm just like learning about things that I never thought I would know about. So one thing that she says that she does to clean her Invisalign is to put it in a denture bath with some effortant. Now my retainer that I wear every night, and I had like two sets of braces when I was little, my teeth were so messed up. And so it is very important to me to always wear my retainer because I'm not going back to that like snaggle tooth person that I was when I was like six. I had the same retainer for 14 years and that is so disgusting, but there you go, I admitted it. And I recently got a new one. And so I wanna keep this one clean. And it looks very much like something that you would get in Invisalign, it's just a clear little plate that goes on your teeth. So I don't clean it every single day because I feel like that maybe is overdoing it. Again, I went 14 years without ever really properly cleaning that one and it lasted a long time. However, it was disgusting. And so this one I definitely want to keep a bit more sanitary and a bit more clean. Every other morning when I wake up, I drop one tab of Effordant in warm water and I put the retainer in there. And it says you can leave it in there up to five minutes or all the way overnight. So moral of the story, you can leave it in there for as long as you want and it's totally fine in case you forget about it like I've done a couple of times. It really does a very effective job of cleaning it off. You know, you get a lot of gunk in your mouth and this has just been the best trick because that retainer seriously was so gross and I just never want to go back to that again. So my new one I'm, I'm keeping crisp and clean and completely see-through. Next product is this DHC cleansing oil and I have probably 50 of you to thank for this. So many people recommended this to me in a product empties video where I had talked about running out of the pharmacy green clean. I had gotten into my double cleansing and I was really feeling good about it and then I ran out of that product and I kind of realized that the format of that was not my favorite. You kind of had to dip your wet fingers into the waxy like product and then go in and kind of melt your makeup off. So I wanted something with the pump to be a little bit more sanitary and just easy to use and this stuff is really good. Now I will say that this still does not completely get my mascara off but I've just found that none of those products really do. And if you found a way that maybe I just haven't tried yet, please feel free to share with me. But this does a great job of getting most of the makeup off. So how I use this is I typically take two pumps, pump it into my dry hands, rub it on my dry face, and try to really melt all that makeup away. Then I get warm water, I wash off my face, and then I go in with my favorite Paula's Choice cleanser, and then I use my Clarisonic. So I'm definitely trying to get my face as clean as possible every single night, and I really have been liking this. This smells to me a lot like just olive oil, and I know that my mom for the longest time was using olive oil for kind of the same purpose, so what's also a little concerning about this is that it says, avoid direct contact with eyes. If contact does occur, rinse thoroughly with water. So maybe this is definitely not supposed to take your mascara off, which is why it doesn't do a good job. <laughs> but I use it on my eyes and it really hasn't been an issue. I'm not like getting it all in my eyes or anything. I have really liked this. I got this 50% off because it was part of the Ulta 21 Days of Beauty, which you also shared with me when you recommended this. So thank you for the great recommendation and the great deal to go along with it. I have really been enjoying this and really, really appreciate the pump. I'm glad I kind of realized that about myself because I have loved this application method a lot more. Another skincare related thing happens to be this Alginist Power Recharging Night Pressed Serum. I had declared a little while ago that I didn't like pressed serums. And I think that that was definitely unfair for me to declare considering at that point I had tried like one and to me it smelled like beef jerky. It was the Tula one. I don't know how to explain it. I had to end up getting rid of it because the, the smell was just so off-putting and I didn't really feel like it was doing a whole lot for my skin. I think, if I remember correctly, I described it as putting on a pore-filling primer when you're going to sleep. And to me, that's just not really letting your skin breathe. It's not extra moisturization. It was very bizarre. So I had this in a little trial size, and as most of you know, I'm really trying to go through all of my products right now without purchasing new things, unless I completely run out of it like the cleansing oil. I pulled this serum out and this sample size, and oh my gosh, this is so good. First of all, 
It smells like a Christmas cookie. It smells kind of like an oatmeal cream pie or like oatmeal cookies or maybe even a hint of like gingerbread or something. It smells great. That's not important. This goes on so nicely, sinks into your skin and makes it feel like velvety soft. I understand that it's kind of doing what that Tula product wanted to do. This one's just actually achieving it. It makes your skin so soft. It is kind of like a matte finish. And how I use this is I cleanse my face and then I go in immediately with the serum, then a moisturizer and then an oil on top of it. I recently have had some problem skin. I don't know if it's probably like, you know, a change in my exercise, a change in my diet considering the foods that I can get are kind of limited with all this quarantine stuff and I'm really trying to stay out of stores. My face has been crazy. This has really done a good job of helping turn things around. I don't even know how to describe it. This is so good. And unfortunately, I think that this is quite expensive. And so I'm really gonna have to um, have, a, have a sit down with myself and decide if this is worth it for the full size because man, I love this. Another absolute favorite that I had to mention is Skylar's April scent from their scent club and it's called Sun Shower. This seriously, I just put it on and I'm trying to waft it, smells like you just stepped out of a shower. It is the perfect scent for spring. It is extremely, extremely fresh. So rather than doing monthly videos about the scent club scents, I'm actually moving to quarterly videos about them. So I wanted to mention this so that you could get this right now just in case it sells out because this to me is so good. This is in the same family as Salt Air, if you have that perfume, which is now part of their permanent line. Just extremely fresh. This is one that Brian's like, mmm, that smells really good. The one thing I will say about this that is a little bit different from Salt Air is I feel like Salt Air lasts on my skin a bit longer than this does. This is not as punchy of a scent. So if you're somebody that kind of likes a mix of like fresh and fruity and floral, this is the perfect scent for you. Please, please go look this up. I think that your first month in the scent club, you can get 50% off and I have a code 50 this or that that can get you 50% off this scent, making this rollerball size 10 bucks for you to give it a shot. It's so good. They also just came out with a hand sanitizer in this scent, which I think is interesting. So, hmm, if this becomes part of their permanent line, I'm just saying, I can see myself wanting the full size. Another thing that I've been really loving is this purse from Madewell. And this was a very belated Christmas gift. My parents ordered this back in December and for whatever reason it was back ordered until March. And so I just recently got it, but this purse seems so tiny, right? Sitting next to me, it looks super small. No, this thing packs a punch. You can hold so many things in this purse. And it's so functional. It's not just a bottomless pit of nothing. It has a great interior zipper pocket where I tend to keep gift cards and any cash that I may have on hand. It also has this great outer pocket if you just wanna slip your phone or something in it really quickly for easy access. But then the inside itself is just designed in such a way that I can fit like my wallet, this extra like pouch of lip products. I have my AirPods in here. I have like a bunch of masks that my mom made us. I have gum. I have lotion. I have hand sanitizer. I mean, this thing just keeps going and holds so much without being bulky. Do you see what I mean? Like it hasn't like completely changed shape or anything. Now this is a splurge. This is a little bit pricey, but man, it's going to last forever. It's such a classic color. I believe mine's in the shade Cognac. And this is the small transport body tote or purse or something like that from Madewell. This also comes in three different sizes. So if you're like Maggie, I know that size would never work for me. They do have a medium and a large one. Just pay attention. Some of them don't have the pocket on the outside. And that was something that was really important for me for like valet tickets or again, putting your cell phone or just those quick things that tend to get lost in your purse that you need easy access to. I always love some sort of outside pocket for things like that. I bought something that I said that I would never buy. I was like, why can't you just get ideas off Pinterest? And this is Joanna Gaines's Homebody Coffee Table Book. This is all about elements of design for every room in your house. And I think I totally underestimated this book. The reason that I bought this is because if you haven't heard, Brian and I just bought our very first house. It's extremely exciting. And something that I tend to do with like new seasons in life is I get a little bit obsessed with them. For instance, when I first got this camera, I watched a million videos about how to set the audio correctly, how to adjust the lighting. It was all about the camera for like three weeks straight. Anything that I could absorb about the camera and learn about the camera, I was learning about it. 
The same thing goes for like home design. Now that we bought this home, I have completely thrust myself into understanding interior design and really creating spaces for us that we absolutely love. We have no idea how long we plan to be in the house. We're not making major changes. It's just making investments in the right furniture for the style that we want. I am just absorbing any information about interior design and trying to understand what I like because I oftentimes find myself buying things and I'm like, that's not really what I had envisioned. It was just the cheaper option. And I'm like, I need to determine where to splurge, where to save. Anyway, this book really outlines a lot of things that I've never thought about because again, I'm no interior designer. And so I'll just show you, for example, she has this whole chapter on bedrooms. And she tells a little narrative about a bedroom. She shows some really pretty pictures. But then the thing that I love that she does is says, what do you consider in this room? Like what things are important? And so she outlines it. You know, you need to talk about the arrangement. Like, is it gonna flow? Do you like how you enter your bedroom? Is it a soothing space? Like, details matter. Like in your bedroom, that's a very personal space. Do you want things that remind you of you? Is that where you want additional pictures? And then it says all of the elements of a bedroom. And so she lists out absolutely everything that's commonly found in a bedroom. And then you can decide whether or not you want to edit those out or maybe add some things to it. So she says, you know, a bench, personal artwork, an armoire or a writing desk, comfortable bedding, a quality bed frame. And I love that she points out like a quality bed frame. She kind of goes in and tells you like, I would splurge on this or save on this. So this book has really taught me a lot. I also just tend to like her style. I think that she does a lot of like modern, but also farmhouse looks. And one thing that Brian and I have discovered is that we have very similar taste in aesthetics. Like we both kind of gravitate toward that mid-century modern look with elements of traditional thrown in there, but also kind of flares of bohemian. And we love baskets and naturals and grasses and things like that. And so we know exactly what we're going for. We just don't always know how to achieve it. And so books like this have been helping. Another thing that I've really dived into lately is Studio McGee. I found her randomly when I was learning how to pair kitchen table chairs and bar stools. Because how our kitchen is oriented in the new house is that you have a defined dining space for your actual dining room table. And then right next to it, you have the counter where your bar stools sit. And so for us, it's very important that the bar stools be complementary of the table and the chairs that sit next to it. And so we knew that we wanted a light wood table with black wood chairs because we want something classic that's gonna last a long time. And I'm not really into buying sets of furniture. I kind of like to mix and match things. And so I was looking up, you know, what type of bar stools would complement that or how do you even mix like different types of seating. And it took me to this blog called Studio McGee that I had never heard of. And I don't know how because her aesthetic is my exact aesthetic. So I have just been completely absorbing everything that she has to say on her YouTube channel. I've been reading her blog. She has so many great design tips and really answers common questions that us like, you know, non-designer folk tend to have about things like what size rug do I buy and how do you orient a rug? And you know, like what rug size makes your space seem bigger? And how do you know how to pick the right side tables? And how do you know what shape to choose your coffee table? Like clearly, these things have been swimming around in my mind because I've now been talking about this for like 10 minutes in this video, but I'm just so immersed in it and so interested in how people who have great eyes for design do it. And I just feel like it's something that can be learned and it's something that I want to learn. It's just a fun, fun season. And I just love thinking about the house and planning for the house in this new chapter. And you know, everything with the wedding right now is completely uncertain, but one thing is for sure, is that we're gonna have a space to live in that we love and that's one certain thing going on right now and so i think it's very fun for me to put all of my energy into home things when all of my energy was being put toward wedding things that have kind of come to a screeching halt so if you ha share the same kind of aesthetic between like joanna Gaines, studio mcgee would probably really appeal to you she's way less farmhousey than joanna is but gosh i just love their stuff it's so fresh and clean but also welcoming and inviting and it's all about texture mm. Now that all the design talk is out of the way, which I could talk about it for a really long time, it just seriously is so interesting to me. And once we move into this space, I kind of wanna like do a room by room and kind of like why we picked certain things. I think that would be fun, if I'm proud of it. If I'm not proud of it, then maybe you won't see it. But anyway, moving on to the kitchen, 
this coffee. There are very little things that are exciting going on these days, right? Because you barely leave your house and little errands that I would run to Target just to break up my day, those are just not allowed anymore. And so one thing that I always look forward to is making a cup of coffee in the morning and one in the afternoon. It's just something to look forward to. It's a good break. I love a warm drink. And my favorite coffee, and has been for a long time, is this Newman Zone Organics. It's their medium roast coffee, however it's described as bold. This to me is the best K-cup coffee you can get because it, it never tastes watery. It has a lot of flavor, it seems robust, it brews pretty boldly just as they state, and you can get these in packs of 100 at Costco, which is what I happened to do right before this entire thing went down in the world. And so fortunately I've had plenty of coffee to get me through. And Keurig coffee can oftentimes just be a little bit lackluster but this gives you exactly what you're looking for in a brewed K-cup. Things you should know about me though, I drink my coffee completely black. I don't put creamer, I don't put sugar, nothing goes in my coffee. And I also really don't like flavored coffees. So you're not gonna catch me with like a caramel coffee or hazelnut coffee. So if those are your cup of tea, maybe, or cup of coffee I should say, then you might not like this. But if you are a purist and you just like some black coffee like I do, I think that you'll really enjoy this. Another great thing for the kitchen that I think all of you need to stop this video right now and go purchase is the Define Dish Cookbook. I talked about this back in December and I also think in January, and it is now April and I'm still loving and using this cookbook constantly. Brian and I have found our most favorite recipe from this cookbook recently in her like better than takeout chapter. And Brian and I absolutely love Asian food. We just share the exact same taste buds as Alex Snodgrass as it turns out because legitimately everything that we cook from this cookbook we like. Now I will say I do make a lot of modifications when it comes to adding more salt or adding more spice. I think that she tends to make things more middle of the road than extremely spicy or something like that because she does have small children. However, she really, really likes spice. So I bet that at home, she makes modifications to her own recipes to make them a little bit more punchy because I feel like when you make a cookbook, it's probably trying to appeal to a lot of taste buds. We don't mind altering on the back end, but her Better Than Takeout chapter has this amazing red curry shrimp and sweet potato noodle recipe that Brian and I absolutely adore. Shrimp is something that I was always afraid to make at home and it turns out it is like easier to make than chicken. Like you only cook it for like six minutes and it's completely done and ready to go. And so this has really gotten us through this quarantine. We really look forward to making recipes from this book. And I love how small it is and how it is one of those books that like lays completely open which is so hard to find in cookbooks. It also has pictures of every single recipe because who wants to make a recipe they can't see what it'll look like at the end? She just thought of everything with this cookbook and seriously, if she writes 85 more, I'm buying all 85. It's that good. Some of you have also mentioned that you wanted to hear kind of what I was reading. And so this month, <laughs> because I pretty much read one book a month because it takes me forever these days, is Maybe You Should Talk to Someone by Lori. I'll get the author's name and put it on the screen. And this book is all about therapy. Now it looks at it from two different perspectives because it's written by a therapist. And so you kind of see the inner workings of how therapists work and what they're taught and why they're effective and why they're helpful. But then she also is going to therapy in this book and explaining that even therapists have to go to therapy. Like you can't always coach yourself through things because you don't always have the clearest vision of what's going on. It's very hard to like be in the thick of something and be able to separate yourself from that and see clearly and then also treat yourself. So it's a very vulnerable book that she wrote and I just think that it's really good for people to understand more about therapy. I feel like it's way less taboo now than it used to be. But for those of you that don't know much about it or you were skeptical about it, I encourage you to read this book because it's just a very interesting take on how even people in that profession need help and need an outlet and someone to talk to. And she's pretty funny in the book. She has a very interesting background from med school to the entertainment industry when she worked on a lot of like big name TV shows at NBC. Very, very interesting career path that she took to end up where she is. but. It's a very, very interesting book. I think I'm about 50% of the way through it. I, I've really enjoyed it. It's been on my list for a long time, so I'm finally glad that I got around to it. That is officially everything. I feel like this is one of the longest videos I've filmed in a long time. 
editing ought to be a treat. If you like this video, then like it, stick around, subscribe, join the community, and I'll see you in my next one. Bye!